JDS MP Prajwal Revanna is in the eye of a massive sex scandal. Three days ago, several videos, hundreds of them, surfaced of Prajwal having sex with a number of women, by some estimates over 2,000 women, many of whom had met the MP asking him for favours to be done. These acts of absolute depravity have shaken the very conscience of the state of Karnataka. And to add to it, Prajwal Revanna has reportedly fled the country. He is reported to be in Germany. Today, his party, the JDS, left with no choice, suspended him, but not before launching an attack on the Congress party and the Congress government in the state, saying that this entire operation was done by DK Shiv Kumar and also that the Congress was aware and was in the knowledge of these videos much earlier, but waited for the election to happen before ordering an inquiry. So, the big question on brass tacks tonight, should there be zero tolerance for sexual predators in public life? What is the presumption? Yes. He has left the country. Huh? 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 It is known to him. Huh? He left the country. I'm glad that, that is not important. What is the position of the NDA? What is the position of the BGP on this issue? That is very much important. How DK Shukumar is the background? How he played in this issue? वहाँ सरकार किसकी सरकार कांग्रेस पार्टी की वे एक वीडियो आपके ध्यान में ही होंगे क्योंकि टाइम पर रिलीज किए गए हैं और अब तक कार्यवाही कांग्रेस पार्टी ने क्यों नहीं द स्टैंड ऑफ भारतीय जनता पार्टी इज क्लियर से नो पॉलिटिकल पार्टी कैन सपोर्ट इन दिस केस एंड स्टेट गवर्नमेंट द प्रेजेंट कांग्रेस गवर्नमेंट हैज ऑलरेडी कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड एन एस All right, so let's take you through the timeline of this case. Back in March of 2023, Prajwal Revanna's driver had quit. He allegedly threatens Prajwal with leaking some of these videos. In June of 2023, fearing the leak of these videos, Prajwal goes to court and the court grants him a gag order against a large number of media establishments saying that they cannot publish these videos online. December of last year, 2023, the former driver files a police complaint. He alleges kidnapping by Prajwal and his mother. In that same month, a BJP leader, Devaraj Gowda, who is a local leader in Hassan, he raises this matter. He accuses Prajwal of sexually exploiting a number of women. In April of this year, Prajwal Revanna's videos go viral. This was just a day before the elections, remember. Just a day before the elections. Karnataka voted in the second phase on the 26th of April. Prajwal Revanna's videos go viral in Hassan district just a day before the polling. On that same day, once this has come to light, the Karnataka State Women's Commission Chief requests the Chief Minister Sidramaya to initiate a probe. On the 26th of April, Prajwal Revana's constituency, Hassan, goes to the polls. The very next day, after the polls, on the 27th, the Karnataka government orders the formation of a special investigation team to probe these videos. And on that same day, after the announcement of the SIT, Prajwal Revana leaves India for a tour of Europe. The day after that, on the 28th, Prajwal Revana and his father, H.D. Revana, are both booked for sexual harassment based on a complainant's uh, case. On the 30th of April, that's today, JDS decides to suspend Prajwal Revana. They have welcomed the SIT investigation, but they've also alleged that DK Shiv Kumar was behind this entire operation. But that is a smaller point compared to the larger issue. And the larger issue is how could an elected member of parliament for the last number of years carry out this kind of sexual depravity, exploiting poor women, many of whom were his constituents who came to him for work to be done 
engaged in this kind of depravity with them shot those videos because he could use that as a threat against these hapless survivors and then how is this man allowed to continue to be in public office today the jds has suspended him but should such people be allowed in public life at all should he not be expelled and be made an example of the nda the bjp of course is hitting back at the congress saying the congress knew about this much in advance and that they deliberately timed the leak of these videos to around the elections so as to vitiate the atmosphere and so as to make this a political issue and the target is not just prajwal revana but the target is the modi sarkar the target is the bjp and to dampen the bjp and the jds chances in karnataka so let's examine this let me go straight across to twin sina national spokesperson of the bjp ashwarya mahadev is congress spokes uh, party spokesperson trisha shetty uh, activist and professor chandan gowda is professor with the institute of social and economic change thank you very much uh, first things first you know twin sina there is absolutely no words to describe the kind of abhorrent behavior we have seen on display by this honorable member of parliament and after the videos have surfaced after a case has been lodged after an sit has been formed for this member of parliament to flee india and apparently he's in germany how can the bjp even condone this how can the bjp even turn around and say oh but what about the congress government in the state how did they let him get away i mean what are you doing about it because he's your ally good evening zaka good evening everybody absolutely there are no words to describe the depravity with which prajwal uh, revana has indulged in our stand is very clear whether it is sheik shah jahan or prajwal uh, revana we are committed to ensuring exemplary punishment to both of them now as per the knowledge as per the information which has come out in the last few days most of these videos actually pertain to, to the period between 2018 and 19 when they were in alliance with the congress party and the congress party in the state was critically dependent on them that is when they he would unleash this depravity and you know the then cm was aware of it but anyway that is not the point the point is had this be, uh, you know i mean he had obtained an injunction last june ideally that injunction order should have been challenged but now i am told that in karnataka there are at least 20 politicians who have that injunction similar injunction order and one is not privy to what is in the video or whatever but nobody from the central leadership of the bjp was aware of it the difference over here lies in the way we have responded to the situation our commitment is unequivocal we will get him back and ensure the same punishment if he is guilty if but he is guilty you say we will ensure the same punishment nobody in your leadership Shaya. knew but, about it twin but there is a gentleman by name gd devaraj gowda he is a local bjp leader apparently has contested local elections in hasan as well uh he's a bjp functionary in that district he says he had written a letter to your state president mr vijendra back in december of 2023 warning him about the predatory nature of mr revana's behavior and he says he got no response from the bjp leadership are you now still suggesting that the bjp leadership was unaware of what prajwal revana was up to no no there is uh... there is some you know there are two versions to it i think he has also said somewhere that he sent a whatsapp you know which was he was not sure whether that whatsapp was read or not so one is not sure i think the state leadership would be in the best position to answer this but what honorable home minister hamid shah ji has said said is very clear we are committed to ensuring exemplary punishment to him and uh, zaka i think the difference over here lies in the way the congress and the bjp respond to situation in the case of sheikh shah jahan we have seen at a press conference you know at a tv9 conclave how kharge ji even condoned it by saying these are small things which keep happening in bengal has any leader from the bjp said that that is basically the difference when this okay. thing happened we were not in alliance with the jds and you know like there are you know like i said there are some i am told 20 politicians in karnataka who have obtained various injunctions okay. one is not aware so of the details of it. Mahadev, and one does not get into the details the, of it the, because one trust the alliance yeah, partner the attack over the attack by the bjp is that the congress leadership was aware of uh, these cds and what mr prajwal revana was up to 
That's what this Mr. Devaraj Gowda has also confirmed that the Congress leadership was aware. Uh, the BJP is making an issue that why have you released this at the time of elections to derive political mileage? So you don't really care about the survivors or the people that Prajwal Revanna exploited. What you are worried about is besmirching the BJP JDS alliance. That's why you have timed this entire thing to the elections. Please respond. Zaka, good evening. Tuhin Sinha's despicable display of diversion is nothing more than an absolute condemnation of what acts of depravity have happened from Prajwal Revana. And I have a few responses here, right? 2018 and 19, Sir Prajwal Revana was elected. In 2019, the Karnataka Congress government fell later because of the horse trading of the BJP in Karnataka. Secondly, sir, let me give you a timeline of things, right? You talk about how your government has acted. On 6 June 2023, there was a stay. On 8 December 2023, Devra J. Gowda, who is not just a BJP leader, but a defeated candidate of Holinar Sipura from the BJP, who wrote about 2,976 videos and said the BJP stands for better. Please do not ally with them. There's a letter to Mr. Amit Shah. There's a letter to Mr. Vijendra. You can try and confuse the people by turning around and saying there was a WhatsApp or no. But Devraj Gowda has gone on every single media channel recently and said he communicated with everybody insofar as in February and March when Amit Shah himself came to Mysore, former MLA Pritam Gowda of Hassan, A.T. Ramswami of Arkal Good and Devraj Gowda went to Amit Shah and said, please do not give Prajwal Revana a ticket. Yet, you saw Prajwal Revana, his father, his uncle, his grandfather with Prime Minister Modi who opposes Parivar Vaad so vociferously, right? And now this accusation of the Congress leaders knowing which is pathetic and the clarification has come out. Devraj Gowda under pressure today saying, oh no, Congress leaders knew it. The driver, mind you, whose wife was beaten up by Bhavani Revana, Prajwal's mother, to the extent that she suffered a miscarriage. The driver has come out and said, the only person I approached after I was beaten up and this happened to my wife, the only person I approached was Devraj Gowda and nobody else. The fact of the matter remains that this act was well within the knowledge of the BJP for months even when the alliance was being speculated. No, and no, but now Aishwarya, Aishwarya, you also need to silent. answer the question that if there are 20 plus politicians and we've seen infamous episodes. No, no, once again, from the Jarki Holi uh, episode to others. If, we, if politicians get stays on the publication of such CDs, such nefarious activity, then surely the government is aware of what is going on. What did the government do is the question Zaka that's being asked. Zaka, so the nature of all these stays, and let me give you a fact and a clarification on that. More than 90% of all the stays that have been taken, there are three or four from the JDS, there are five from the Congress, which we are also looking into, but close to 27 of them all come from the BJP. And Mr. Prajwal Revana, much like his colleagues, Mr. Pratap Simha and Tejasvi Surya has taken a stay as soon as he realized that defamatory matters may come out. But this is the very critical question. Are you allowed to cover or use the guise of a stay to cover up acts of sexual brutality and violence against women? From the reports that we're hearing, there are women being brutalized. There are women being videotaped against their consent. And okay. I come from a taluk called K.R. Nagar that is right next to Hole Narsipura. And the number of families and women even in my taluk today who are scared and afraid and who have been basically brutalized by this man is rising as we get to know more. It is more than shameful. There is absolutely no excuse for it. So, we have acted. Trisha, we have not to Trisha register Shetty, an FIR. What, we have acted. We will ensure he what, get, uh, what, basically what, bring him what, to justice. What is, what is absolutely you know, despicable, Trisha, is A, this man is a public representative. Many of these victims had come to him seeking some kind of work to be done by the Member of Parliament. He has taken advantage of that situation, not only indulged in this kind of depraved behavior with them, then shot that, oftentimes himself or with the help of AIDS, as some kind of insurance against these victims going public. Please explain to our viewers what are the charges that can be brought against this man? Because it's absolutely sinister to even wrap your head around what he was what he was doing with these women. You know, firstly, thank you so much for centering this conversation around the victims. 
because unfortunately what we have seen as of now is political mudslinging to the point where we forgotten to center the complete abominable atrocities that these alleged victims have been subject to few questions come to mind right even though the crimes that prajwal has been accused of credibly has come to light how was he allowed to leave the country under what jurisdiction was he allowed to leave the country that is something we must question how did he get away with abusing so many women so frequently and with such ad hoc impunity for so long we must also keep into account who this person individual is not only is he an mla he belongs to political royalty his grand he's the grandson of the former prime minister his uncle is a chief minister so you're talking about an individual as his access to obscene political patronage power who is abusing whom the survivors the victims on the other end are people who are way less powerful than him party workers domestic workers people who need protection and security the vulnerable class of society are being abused by someone who has access to such kind of obscene access to power and privilege we must also take into consideration you know i'm really heartened with what bjp spokesperson is saying that there shall be no consideration no light handed treatment given to this accused i would also wish he would condemn the statements put out by mr kumar sani who said this is a conspiracy to spoil his family name it is disheartening when you hear the former chief minister instead of condemning his family relative and equally vocally right instead saying this is a conspiracy to spoil the family name who has spoiled the family name said individual has spoiled the family name it is also extremely yeah. disheartening to your jds come out with a statement that says this has caused considerable damage to the party's dignity and leadership who has caused that the videos have caused considerable damage have the videos caused considerable damage or a party member who has gotten away with sexually exploiting yep. abusing the most vulnerable party members of your own of your own party who is causing the damage we must again ask how were the videos circulated for so long the details of this story are sickening to know that the videos were circulated in bus stations are we even forgetting that this country is a country that runs on you know the dignity of and protection of women and instead you so, see political mudslinging so I, i really wish thank you i say we should center this conversation around the victims i do i do want to ask uh, to professor gauda uh, one of the critical questions that trisha is asking and everybody is asking is how was this man allowed to leave the country on the 26th which is the day that hasan voted just a day or so prior to that these videos are doing the rounds the very next day after the voting an sit is formed and an fir is lodged and on the night between 27th and 28th he leaves bangalore how was he allowed to leave zaka i don't know the legal technicalities but he ought not to have been allowed to leave but he's not the first to be allowed to leave under these kinds of circumstances where he is wanted by law and they managed to leave the country anyway he's just the latest among a series of such people and we can do a check about you know who who was allowed to leave under whose government etc but the fact remains that and the legal system that is supposed to regulate movements of people is selective in how it goes about it so this is unfortunate no no but ultimately if an fir yes. has been lodged and these are not light yes. crimes these are heinous crimes you know yes. the, the charges uh, in the initial fir are against rape 376 yes. right and if this yes. is known and on that night this gentleman leaves from that very same jurisdiction surely then either the the system is callous or it seems yes. to have a different set of rules for people like prajwal revanna or yes. as as some people are alleging there was some kind of underhand deal it seems that way i mean you know the immigration formalities are handled by the ministry of external affairs and the local movement you know by car leaving the district reaching the airport etc the state government is in control of it so i think there is complicity at multiple levels zaka i don't frankly i must confess i don't know the legal technicalities to apportion i mean to you know fix the blame precisely on one authority and nobody else and what But do I you make see... of what hd kumar swami is is saying on the first day when it came out he was like you know law should take its course and you know neither me nor my father have been associated with this kind of behavior we're condemning it and then slowly and surely to today when he's saying oh this is a conspiracy dk shiv kumar is responsible for it the congress knew about it they timed it for electoral gains and so on 
clearly he's singing a different tune from day one to day three now. Zaka, uh, I, I, I don't see why we should just, you know, you know, I'm not trying to defend anybody, but he's been fairly categorical in they've expelled Prajwal Revarna. Right? And they're clearly saying they said he should take its course, etc. No, no, they've but not expelled him. They have suspended him. They have suspended okay. him, saying that till the SIT comes to a conclusion, he will remain right. suspended. They've not right. expelled I mean, him from the party. Okay, so yeah, I think it's you know everyone is allowed investigation, and let's see, you know, you have to keep it open until SIT proves it conclusively. Although we can see the videos and feel like he's surely participating in it, I would just. You know, without judgment until it's conclusively proved. I mean, this is, you know, the basic thing you would extend to all accused, right? You're guilt, you're innocent until proven guilty. Okay. Anyway, Zaka, uh, but HDK statements, you know, I, I think he's, you know, if, it's not just him. Even a whole range of people are saying different things at different days. It's an evolving situation. But I don't see his later statement being more credible than the previous statement. They all have to be considered together. Okay. Ashw Ashwarya Mahadev. So, uh, it comes down to this critical question of, you know, what was the Congress government doing? If you knew this from June 2023 when the court ordered the stay, then surely it was public knowledge. And, and the most important question, after the FIR was filed, how was he allowed to leave the country through an airport in your state where you have jurisdiction, the police is under you? How did you let him get away? Now God even knows if he's going to come back and face the law. Zaka, uh, offer me the privilege of uh, factually making a few clarifications on this. One, in 6 June when the stay was taken, there was no material placed except that there is an apprehension of defamatory material being published in media. For example, there was no evidence provided of what the material was when the stay was offered. And I mean, if I am wrong on this, then I hope Trisha, who's also a very active lawyer, can clarify on this when that was when the stay happened, right? Because even when Tejasvi, Surya, Pratap, Simha have taken stays, nobody knows the content of what it is. A lot of other BJP MLAs, when they've taken stays, they've been little bit of things put out in the media, then the stay has been taken. This was first before that. Second thing, I'm going to give you a timeline. On 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, when all of this broke, from what we know, there was literally no complaint. There was no FIR. We were hearing a lot of things. Devraji Gowda had not spoken. On 26th, and you can quote me on this and fact check me on this. On 26th morning, he went alone to what? He went back to Bangalore and his flight was on 27th morning at 2.10 a.m. So the minute after he's voted, and mind you, his own uncle, his mother's brother has passed away in Hole Narsipura. He has not gone for that. He has fled from Hole Narsipura, gone to Bangalore, and taken the flight at 2.10 on 27th morning. The SIT, at which point the SIT was formed on the 27th, based on the letter on the late evening of the 25th from the Women's Commission. And by that time, and there are two things here. The Women's Commission had issued a notice to the SP there and on the 27th when finally the SIT was formed and then we realized that he had fled the country, there is also more investigation happening on the SP who was issued notice to keep a lookout on the whereabouts of the people who were accused. The FIR was registered late on 28th. That is the timeline. We believe the Congress government here has taken all action that is needed. SP has been given notice. There is no, no. higher. What, what, one the second, one second. Ashwarya, you, you've, just, you've, just out, you've just given out, you've just given out the timeline. If on the 25th this came to the attention of the State Women's Commission and the State Women's Commission alerted the concerned district authorities. Why did you wait between the 25th and eventually the 27th or 28th for the FIR to be filed? And by which time, the said gentleman has left the country. So it just so leads you to believe that somebody in the district had sort of sounded him out. You know, Zaka, if you go to Hassan, you understand precisely what the situation is there with the Deve Gowda family and which is why the SP who was issued notice about keeping a lookout, there's also in the SIT, that angle is also going to be probed if there was any laxity or any sort of lax in the duty that they were supposed to okay. undertake. The no, no, it, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's an utter shame. That's, a, that's an absolute shame. But anyway, that is, a, that is a minor you know. matter. My, my larger question is to Insina, A, will you distance yourself from the JDS, uh, you had the JDS had three candidates. One of those three was Mr. Rev, uh, Prajwal Revanna. The other two were one his uncle and uh, two uh, the brother-in-law of uh, Mr. H D Kumar Swami. Three candidates. One of them is Mr. Revanna, and and these atrocious 
uh, activities have, have come out against him. No, so Zaka, let me tell you that it was the BJP which had advised them to immediately take action against Revanna, after which he was, he was, you know, suspended from the party. But from what the Congress spokesperson is saying over here, it seems that the Karnataka state government is absolutely helpless. You know, it seems that Hassan is another country. That's what she's uh, seeming to indicate, that they have very little control over what happens in Hassan. But the fact is, Zaka, our action speaks louder than Congress's vacuous words. Have A similar pervert in Sandesh Kali had been unleashing, please have don't interfere, have that basic courtesy. A similar pervert in Sandesh Kali had been unleashing this kind of behavior for many years and Mamta Banerjee had been protecting him. What did we do? Not only have we got him arrested, we have ensured that you know the entire case is under CBI and he meets punishment. No, so, and this uh, is what uh, we can you make the same assurance? Can you make the if same assurance guilty, in the case of Rajul Revanna exactly that he will be brought will back ensure. to the country, face the law, and arrested if need be? He will be meted the same fate no, no, as Shah Jahan Sheikh. Can you is, make that assurance the on the show? Is, Zaka, the point is, if he could time his escape so well, you know, with the coming out of certain videos, it only shows that he has friends in the state government who probably alerted him, who okay. probably, you know, passed on information to him. And yes, I'm giving you the assurance that, you know, I have give, that was the starting statement of mine on the show that if he's guilty, he will be, he will be given exemplary punishment. Okay. Because as a public representative, what he has done is far more condemnable. It is far more unpardonable. Okay, we've just got... Uh, all right. Um, so, uh, Trisha, I'll give you the final word. I have to get uh, concluding remarks from both uh, Trisha as well as from uh, uh, Chandan Gowda. So, both father and son, that is Mr. H.D. Revanna and Prajwal Revanna, have been booked under 354A, 354D, 509 and 506. What is the, the maximum punishment we're looking at in these cases? And two, again, I come back to this fundamental question. What if he doesn't come back to the country and face the law? You know, the punishment of rape, uh, especially for aggravated sexual assault from people of position of power and authority is very simple. He can be subject to a minimum of 10 years for this. Uh, a few statements is are really perturbing to hear the professor here say that uh, we should not exercise judgment on a man accused of such heinous accused of such heinous crimes and who enjoys such powerful political patronage is extremely disturbing, especially when Mr. Kumaraswamy has very uh, generously uh, put forward his judgment uh, when it comes to this issue. It's extremely disturbing also, you know, uh, with all due respect to the Congress representative, when you go and ask people to vote for you, law and order, jurisdiction of power, of, of protection of women, uh, their security comes under your portfolio, right? So we must take into account and take ownership to say that we will account for for the safety and security of every woman within our jurisdiction who's been subject to such heinous crimes. Coming back to BJP, time and again, we are reminded of how powerful this government is. Time and again, we are reminded of how powerful your leadership is. You're telling me you cannot, enforce, you cannot ensure that this accused gets... Uh, is, is forced to come back to the country? Is this how you ex is this how you expose your own weakness? That such a powerful government of the world's largest democracy cannot ensure that you make sure an accused who is charged cheated in a crime is uh, is forced to come back to country to the country, extradited from Germany and forced to come back here. You all are all culpable. You all are all responsible in failing the women who have been subject to the worst crime here. If right. only you all would stop your political mudslining and center I the survivors here. Make sure I'll they're give, protected, I'll make sure the they're compensated. To, to uh, Professor Gowda, you know, the cynical view is uh, I don't think he's going to come back to the country. Unt All right, we've lost uh, Professor Chandan Gowda. But, but well, I'll wrap up by saying this. I, uh, you know, th this is a cynical view, and, and blame me, you know, uh, if I've seen so many other cases of a similar nature uh, going down the, the drain, as it were, the legal drain hole. Uh, I don't think Prajwal Ravana is going to come back to this country uh, until he gets some kind of uh, relief from the courts. Uh, two, I don't see, you know, uh, a, any kind of political ramifications. Uh, I certainly don't see the BJP, you know, suspending or snapping its uh, ties with the JDS until at least the election results come out and thereafter, depending on the results and, of course, the blowback from this entire incident, uh, depending on that, they might take a call on the alliance. And, and like I said, the most cynical view, of course, is 
that this is not going to have an impact on the remaining 14 seats in Karnataka because anyway, the seats that uh, the JDS has some kind of influence in has already voted. So for the rest of the, uh, the state, that the remaining half of the state that's voting uh, in the third phase on the seventh, this may not even be uh, such an issue. That's the cynical view. I hope that the people of Karnataka, the people of India uh, are able to prove all of us wrong.